<clears throat> Welcome to day eight of our 30 day challenge. Today I am teaching a seated practice. Uh, one of the ways we can make our yoga practice incorporate it daily into our lives is to make it more accessible. <clears throat> and how we do that is there's many ways, but one of the ways is keeping our yoga practice fresh and creative, um, trying to do new things every day and not come to the mat the same way every time. Another way is to honor where you are. And some days we have less energy than others. Some days we don't feel as well. It doesn't mean we shouldn't practice. Um, it means we should modify our practice to meet us where we are. And so today I'm teaching more of a, uh, a gentler practice for those days when maybe we would otherwise not come to the mat. If we didn't have as much energy, we can do this practice as a way to still get on the mat and move and be with ourselves and breathe and ground ourselves, but without as much effort as maybe another practice would require. So all of the poses we're doing today are gonna to be seated. So you can begin cross-legged. Just take a few moments sitting up tall. Your hands can be somewhere comfortably resting and shoulders release, releasing down, close your eyes, and just take a few moments to connect with your breath. And when you're ready, you can bow toward your own heart. Let your hands come down, lift your head. We're just going to start with rolling the head from side to side. So without slouching your spine, keep your spine nice and tall. Lower your chin to your chest and inhale your ear to your shoulder. Exhale your head to center. Inhale to the other side. And just moving very slowly and gently as you kind of discover maybe some tension, maybe some limited mobility, maybe sensation, maybe it feels really good. But just kind of take the first view just to acknowledge what is present. And when you're ready, come back to center and lift your head. And we'll start with some gentle shoulder rolls. You're gonna move from the back to the front for the first portion and then we'll do the other direction in a moment. And just start small and slow. And what you'll notice is you might feel kind of jerky here. So let your first objective be to find some smoothness. And maybe that means you have to slow this down. Maybe you have to make it smaller. Maybe you have to do both to find that smoothness. And then you'll just find a nice place to land and switch direction. And you might notice it's a little bit different as you go in the new direction. And next time the shoulders come around, you can just leave them down and back. And we're gonna come into a Kriya, which is kind of a cleansing technique term. You can kind of cup the hands with your, your knees with your hands. And you're gonna find your sitting bones and just start to circle your weight over the sitting bones. So you're feeling kind of the full circumference of your sitting bones. You're also starting to bring some movement into the spine and the torso, contracting the abdomen, opening the chest. And you'll find a rhythm that works for you. It is nice to exhale when you're contracting the abdomen and inhale when you're opening the chest. And of course, we're moving in one direction now, so we'll switch in a moment. Find a place to kind of land and reverse and you can just start to take it in the other direction. And this is stimulating to the digestive system. So you might hear some noises, you might have some um, gas passing through you. So just kind of going with that. It's always best not to eat or drink a couple hours before you practice yoga, just because we do kind of start to stimulate a lot of the digestive processes in the body. I'll just take it one more time around here. You can circle your way back to center and we're gonna join the feet. 
and we'll wake up the spine and also the hips this way in, in dolphin dives. So you're gonna start by keeping your eyes forward, leading with your chest, coming down as low as you can, as low as your body will allow. And then tuck your chin round your spine and stack the spine back up. You're gonna exhale as you lower and inhale as you rise back up. And again, we're, we're more concerned with smoothness and fluidity than the range of motion. And you're gonna really try to connect with your breath as you exhale, you wanna be lowering toward the floor and as you inhale, you wanna be rising. Let's do it once more like this. And then you return to an upright position. We'll go down in the opposite way. We're gonna round the spine down. So tuck the chin in, tuck the navel in, lead with the forehead, come down nice and low. When you get to your low point, look forward, open the chest, arch your back and come up. We're still gonna exhale as we lower. We're still gonna inhale as we rise. So think about how a dolphin moves through the water, undulating the spine, very smooth movement. So rounding down, arching your back up. Once more here. And when you make your way back up, you'll take your alternate seated position. So we all have one that we favor. So just try to find the less favored cross-legged position. And we'll come back to the seated position just to come through some more actions with the spine. And we're gonna take our arms out side to side so the wrists extend off the line of the shoulders. We're gonna come into what I call a false clap so on the inhale, you'll just move the wrist back, the chest forward and slightly look up. And on your exhale, you're gonna round your spine and almost bring the hands together and curl your gaze in toward your navel. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Three more. abiding by the flow of your own breath. Last one. So that's the flexion and extension of the spine. Now we're gonna move into some lateral movement. You can place your hands next to you. Just leave one hand down, inhale the opposite arm up, exhale it over. Inhale up, exhale it down. Inhale the other arm up, exhale it over. So you're moving in a crescent shape this way with your spine. Inhale the arm up, exhale it over. Inhale out of it. Good, a couple more. So moving into the lateral movement on the exhalation, out of it on the inhale. Let's do one more here. And lowering the hand. So lastly, for the last two actions of the spine is the twisting action. We'll do it fluidly with breath again. So on the inhale, raise both arms. On the exhale, turn, placing your hand, crossing your body, the other hand behind you, just squeezing out the one breath. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale. Inhale, center, exhale. So you're following your own breath, exhaling into that twist, inhaling to come out of it. And just once more to each side. Wonderful. When you come back to center, you can bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes for a couple of breaths. Drop the shoulders. Turn your gaze away from your brain, which is quieting to the brain. Connecting with your breath and just acknowledging any after effects from what you just did. 
And now we'll come into a sequence on each side. We'll begin with the right side. So you can stay seated on your blanket, which is always good to kind of help keep your spine in an upright position. And we're gonna come into a twist first. So we're, we're gonna fold the right leg in so that the right knee extends in front of the right hip. And you can carry the left foot to the thigh side of the left knee, otherwise to, sorry, I meant to say right knee, otherwise to the shin side. So it depends uh, where you can be. Your right hand will hold the left shin and your left hand is gonna prop behind you. And if you can go a little bit farther here, you can raise the right arm and catch the arm against the left thigh. And looking off to the left here. And try to draw the flesh of the outer left hip back to the floor. Three more breaths. And after this third exhalation, you can inhale your way out of the twist. And we're going to attempt to stack the legs in what's called log crossing position, log stacking position, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and if this is not accessible to have your left shin over your right shin, you can modify by just crossing your left shin in front of your right shin. So we're going to be here. And if you are crossing the shins, you might need to take care of kind of rebalancing your sitting bone weight. So you just kind of push down, lift up your buttocks and try to reset all the sitting bones with more evenness there. We're gonna be coming into Gomukhasana, which is the cow pose. And for a lot of us, we need to have a strap to connect the hands behind the back. So just have one available, but first go in and see if you need it before you grab it. We'll extend the right arm up and revolve the arm so that your palm faces back. Touch your spine with your fingertips. And as you can see, my elbow is pretty much stacked above the shoulder. That's what we want extending that left arm thumb down and then swinging the arm and see if the hands connect. You can crawl your way up your back and hook the hands together. If you need a strap, you can go in and take the strap and use that to connect the, the, the gap between the hands. So however you're connecting your hands, you're gonna to start to refine the pose, just gently taking the elbow tips back, softening the face, and there's a lot of energy in the upper body in this pose. So you wanna really maintain an awareness of the lower body, staying anchored and heavy. Keep your facial skin really soft. It might be nice to close the eyes here. Release tension from your jaw. And just a couple more moments, taking the elbow tips back, but keeping your lower back long so what we don't wanna do is take elbow tips back and then start to distort the lumbar spine or push into the abdomen. So keep your navel pulled in, tailbone tilted under, elbow tips back. Wonderful. You can begin to release your Gomukhasana arms and we're gonna un kind of un unwrap the leg. So if your left shin is either in front of you or on top of the right shin, we're going to extend it out 45 degrees and draw the right heel in toward the right inner thigh. We're coming into head, head to knee pose. So for a lot of us, we need to have some support here. If the knee is kind of floating up in the air, you definitely want to tuck something under there like a blanket or a pillow or bolster or, or a block um, so that the leg can sit down. You're going to turn your torso as well as you can toward your left leg. So you're taking your hands and helping your torso revolve to face that leg. For a lot of us, we need a strap to connect with the foot. We don't reach the foot very easily. So you might um, see if you need that and go ahead and take hold of your strap to the foot or grab the foot directly. And take a few moments just kind of pulling back so that you can extend the torso over the leg. You're gonna come down as close as you can to the leg and attempt to keep some awareness on this side, the bent knee side, the right leg as your anchor. Continue to steer your torso to the left. And you might start to feel a nice releasing sensation to the right lower back. And if you do, just give it some good breath. Give it some attention and some breath. 
We'll be here about another half of a minute. Every time you breathe in, imagine you're lengthening the trunk out across the leg. And every time you breathe out, you're coming a little bit closer to the leg. Good. So I also wanted to teach this class today because with this challenge, a lot of us are stepping into a daily practice, which can be new for many of us. And the body is responding a lot. I've heard back from people that, you know, it's a good feeling, but that they are sore and there is some stiffness and um, I'm feeling it as well. <clears throat> Teaching a lot of things I don't normally teach, uh, which is really fun for me, but I'm also feeling it in my body. So I'm, I'm glad we have this day to kind of offset um, some of that tension that we might have un, un, uh, intentionally invited into the body. So you're gonna let go of the strap. I'm gonna have you place your arm on your own leg just because we're gonna simplify and not require a lot of props. So place your forearm on your left leg, place your right hand on your right thigh and just start to revolve your torso now to look to the right. Just taking a very mild version of revolving head to knee pose. And if you can keep the right leg anchored, take the right hand to the back of the head and take the elbow tip back to help you revolve the torso. Good. And now you can help yourself just kind of come out of that revolving version of the pose. You can come back upright to seated. And we're going to finish this side of the sequence by carrying the left leg behind us now for pigeon pose. So you need to kind of adjust yourself so that the left leg will come behind you. The right knee will walk in a little bit and the right shin will walk forward a little bit. And the blanket that you have hopefully available is going to be tucked underneath the right hip side. The first thing we want to take care of is that we're not just kind of tipping over into our right buttock. So see if you can support some evenness across your hips and it might require that you build up the height underneath your right hip a little bit more. And then prop up on your fingertips so that you really invite the opening that puffed up pigeon chest, the extended spine, the back bend here. A couple breaths in. When you reach the top of the next in breath, carry it forward and create a little support for your forehead by stacking up your two fists, propping your forehead. So this pose, we usually have to hold at least a minute, usually longer than that, so that we can wait out the, the kind of reflexes in the body that tense against this pose. So the initial moments here, just focus on your breath elongating the body starting to come into that more surrendered state and maybe refining the mechanics of the pose, maybe inching that left leg longer, scooting the right shin forward, rolling some weight out of that heavier right hip side. You're going to lift your head. We'll come out by way of downward facing dog, but we'll be shooting the right leg up to relieve the leg of any tension here. So go ahead and slide any blankets out of the way. Prop your hands to the sides of your mat. Curl your left toes under and on an exhale, releasing the right leg up into the sky and really flexing the foot and straightening out the leg as best you can. And then take the toes down. Bring your knees down, cross your ankles, and sit back. And we'll set up for side two of our sequence. So you will want to probably come back to sitting bone support with your blanket. You can always use additional height if you need more than one blanket, use it. The way we know is if the lower back sits upright, that's a good sign. If it's rounded out, probably more height is needed under you. And now we'll set up for the twist. This time the left knee will extend in front of the left hip and your choice whether to cross above the knee or keep the foot alongside the shin. It's more modified alongside the shin. So go ahead and find your seated position for your twist. If you do come up above the knee, you'll probably wanna rebalance the weight of the sitting bone so it's more even. Left hand will hold right shin. 
Right hand will prop behind you. And then you may decide to lift that left arm and drop the arm to catch the thigh. If you want a little bit of a deeper hook to go in deeper to the twist. Twist, climb the body from lowest to highest. So just initially kind of inviting the weight of the seat to settle and I'm envisioning that twist climbing your spine in its own time. Keeping your chin for now, just kind of floating right above the sternum. Bringing that left armpit chest out of the shadows, restoring and recovering some weight to your right sitting bone, drawing the flesh of the right hip back toward the floor. Three more exhales. And on an inhale, you can lift and lengthen yourself out of that twist. You're gonna set up the legs for Gomukhasana, which again might mean you're crossing shins in that log stacking position, or it might mean you have the right shin in front of the left shin. Take some time with that. And again, if you're doing log stacking, you want your sitting bones to be equally weighted. So you might need to pick up your weight and try to resettle the weight more evenly. If you needed a strap on the first side, you'll probably need it on the second side. So you can go in by holding the strap in your left hand. If you know you don't need it, you're just gonna extend the left arm up, revolve the arms, the palm faces back and touch your spine. Reach out with that right arm thumb down, swing the arm and catch the strap or hook the hands together. And the function of the hands behind the back here is really to invite the shoulder blades to move in, the chest to remain lifted and spread. It's also to activate the arms, to extend the sides of the torso. Keep your head right above your spine. We're not pushing the head forward, which can happen in this pose. You might even close the eyes, just draw your attention inside your body. The elbow tips like to curl forward, so just gently magnetize them back, but not at the cost of shortening the low back or pushing into the abdomen. And go ahead and gently Open your eyes if they were closed, releasing your Gomukhasana arms and extending the right leg out to the side 45 degrees, drawing the left heel in toward the upper inner thigh, propping this knee if you need to. If you see that the knee is floating or you feel gripping in your groin or hip, tuck something under there to give it a feeling of security. And then you'll use your hands to revolve your torso to face right. We have some work to do to really get the breastbone to line up with the right leg. If you needed the strap before, you'll probably want to use it again, taking it to the sole of the right foot. Inhale, nice and big here. Exhale, come over the leg, keeping as much openness between the front ribs and the pelvis as you can. Your body will go deeper in its own time. So just be where you are, meeting yourself where you are. Try to squeeze the little gap shut between the right knee and the floor between the right ankle and the floor. Every time you inhale, grow the length of the spine, propel the torso out over the leg. Every time you exhale, maybe go a little deeper, closer to the leg. And you might've gained access or feel some sensation, some warmness in the left lower back. Bring your breath and attention there. And finishing up an exhalation, you can inhale to come out of the pose. We're going to prop the right forearm on the right thigh, press the left hand down firmly on the left thigh, and start to push into the forearm and hand to revolve your torso to the left, finding the revolving version of head to knee pose. 
And if you can keep a sense of groundedness in the left leg, you'll take the left hand to the back of the head and just take the elbow tip back to encourage the opening of the chest and the revolving of the spine to continue. One more inhale. And on your exhale, you can turn out of the twist, bring your torso upright. And this is where we're gonna guide the right leg behind us for pigeon pose. So you can move any props out of the way and you're gonna shoot that right leg back behind you. Bring that left knee a little bit closer to midline and inch the left shin more toward the top of the mat. And then filling in the gap between your outer left hip and the floor, come up onto your fingertips. Take a few deep breaths here. Top of the inhale, start to lengthen forward. Create a little pedestal for your forehead and connecting your forehead with the hand instantly quiets down the, ner the nervous system. Weeding out those reflexes and just riding the waves of your own breath with your attention. Emptying the next two exhalations. Using an in breath to start to come out of the pose. You can slide any props away. We'll come out through downward dog, shooting the left leg up. So creating nice foundation with your hands, curling the right toes under on an exhale, shoot the left leg back behind you as high as you can bring it without rotating the hips. Really straighten the left leg and really Press out through the heel, flexing the foot. Bring the toes down and hold downward facing dog just for four or five breaths. Begin to lower your knees wide to the edges of the mat, sweep the feet together and sit back for child's pose. Leave the arms forward. You can prop your forehead if you need to, if the floor feels too low. Otherwise, cross your forearms and use your hands or wrists as a support. In the next four or five breaths, inviting your tailbone to pull away gently from the skull. Once you find that vertical length along the spine, also include the idea of a broadening across the back, a feathering out of breath between the back ribs. The contact of your thighs against your torso helps move the breath into the back body. Just a couple more moments here. You're going to sit forward enough that you can cross your ankles, extend your legs forward and lie down. You're going to come into Shavasana unfolding your limbs in a spacious way, moving any props out of the way that are touching you, closing your eyes, and letting the earth absorb your full body weight.
Move your hands onto your belly. Bend your knees one at a time and help yourself to either side of your body. Take your hands and just push them into the floor to help bring yourself upright. Coming into your seated cross-legged position with your hands pressing together in front of the heart. Sitting quietly just a few moments. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste.